I think now is a really good time to have your eyes open. You know, you do have to take some risk when things are trending down. You have to be a contrarian in the sector or you're going to be a victim. It's getting to me to feel like that level of despondency right now, which has me personally excited because that's 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 how it typically feels when when you you're close to a turning point. I think now is a really 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 good time to be looking at what's high quality and what's what's sold off and it is is now very cheap. The Resource Insider Investment Service provides independent research and access to exclusive investment opportunities in the mining and metal space. See the link in the show notes below to learn more and use discount code MSE when you sign up for a 15% discount. And make sure you also download the free Resource Insider ebook by clicking on the link in the show notes below. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Bill Powers with MiningStockEducation.com, and I'm reporting again from Toronto. I'm sitting down with my friend Sam Broom, an investment executive with Sprock Global. You can find Sam on the internet, on Twitter in particular, at the Nude Investor is his handle. Sam, thanks for taking the time to sit down with me. Bill, no problem. Great to be here. So we're in the middle of the second day of the conference. What are your thoughts on the conference so far? Yeah, it's been really interesting. Um, obviously, the price action in the commodity space the last sort of few weeks and especially the last few days um, means there's a lot of talk about uh, you know what's, what's going on in the sector. Um, I, I'm finding that really interesting. Um, I, obviously all the exhibitors here um, in terms of companies, they're all companies that we've been involved with at, at some point. Um, so it's been great to catch up with, with a bunch of the issuers, get the latest updates. Um, I'm feeling really, really positive about the sector actually. I know that's probably contrary to how a lot of people are feeling right now, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying what I'm seeing. Um, haven't had a chance to, to listen to many of the speakers because I've just been so busy catching up with, 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 with clients and, and, and issuers. So it's, it's been really good. And what feedback have you gotten from some of your clients and attendees just by man in the Sprout booth? What feedback and what are you sensing? I'm sensing a lot of uh, kind of... Uh, perhaps kind of uncertainty and, and people are just saying you know wondering is this the bottom um and i and i think based on the sentiment i'm getting this is usually how it feels uh when you're getting close closest to a, to a bottom in the space so from that regard it's been really useful to, to gauge sentiment and, 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 and see what the, you know the general joe joe public is feeling um there's also a lot of optimism out there you know there's uh, when you get these these sort of you know, downwards, downward slides in the, the commodity prices, the cream tends to to rise to the top a little bit. So it can be really useful um, looking at who's able to finance, um, who's got projects that are actually, you know, that are doing interesting and, and, and insightful exploration. Um, and at this point in time in the cycle, a lot of the really good stuff is just dirt cheap. I mean, there are just absolutely opportunities all over the shop that are getting me really excited um, it, it's a good time to have some capital available to, to put to work, put it that way. Especially if you're a major looking to b- buy a good asset. And uh, we've seen that in the last month. There's been some M&A activity. What are your thoughts on the recent M&A activity and what does it uh, signify? Look, I'm, I'm absolutely huge on the M&A uh, side of things. You know, my, my clients that are listening to this will know that I think, uh, hands down, buying the the takeover plays is the best thing to be doing right now um nev sun for example a couple of days ago which was was probably one of my bigger positions on my book for my clients um we just saw the the lundin officially come out with this with a sweetened deal cash offer um you know at, at the end of the day just about every single major mining company out there is staring down the barrel of a declining production profile if you go out you know five five to ten years and because of the the way the cycle's been, they just haven't done the exploration work um, to, to to replace reserves and resources. It just hasn't happened. Um, so they've either got two options: they either accept a declining production profile, um, or they go out and buy something. Uh, you know, they can do their own exploration as well. Um, the problem with that is it takes five to ten to fifteen to twenty years by the time you stick a drill bit in the ground make a discovery to get a mine in, into production so if they want to avoid that decline uh, they're going to have to buy buy stuff and there's just not that much high quality stuff out there so it's kind of a stock picker's dream at the moment um, you know there, there are there are there are a handful of companies that I have a very high conviction uh, you know you, you never know for sure but I have a fairly good idea that I think 
they're going to get bought out at some stage. You know, it's, it's always great when it works out as well. The Nev Sun ex- example recently is that was one one that I thought was going to get taken out. It's played out that way, and I think we're going to see that really increase in the next 12 to 18 months. I, th- I think it's going to be, it's, it, you know, it's it's going to really ramp up. In our first conversation about six months ago at the beginning of this year, you shared with listeners your top three uh, resource sectors to invest in. The first one was the agricultural commodities. Now that we're halfway through the year, what are your thoughts on the agricultural commodities? Yeah, so that kind of hasn't played out as I'd hoped yet. Um, you know, some of these some of these have actually been relatively hammered in the, in the first half of the year. Nothing at all has changed in my my thesis there. Um, I think I really do think that the agricultural space is going to be is going to be an interesting place to, to play. I, I don't think you have to get cute with the agricultural space. Um, you know, just even just general broad basket of exposure to the to the various commodities. I mean, they're trading at multi-decade lows. A lot of these 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 commodities. Um, I, I remain. I, I'm going to stick by that. It hasn't quite played out over the first six months, but I I strongly think that that agricultural commodities is something that investors should, at the very least, have their eye on. And you know, I think I think now is a very interesting time to be a, a buyer of agricultural commodities and. You know, even things like the fertilizer plays, and they're they're at you know, ten, fifteen, twenty year lows in terms of share price. Um, so, if if you're a contrarian and you want a bombed out sector, it's it's there's some happy hunting out there at the moment. You were also excited about the precious metals, and you mentioned that you thought they would break out one way or the other. What's your thoughts on gold and silver now? So yeah, we're we're pretty much at the point now where um, I think we're either we've just seen a sort of a capitulation sort of sell off in the last week in the last couple of days um you know 1200 to 1220 is a very important level technically um you know technicals aren't everything but it is is something that i keep an eye on um so i'm looking for some strong support here if we do see a solid bounce here i'm feeling very excited about the gold space um i always had sort of an eye on the on the second half of this year for for the charters out there there's there's a very large five to six year um, reversal pattern, the inverse head and shoulders that's been playing out for for a long, long time. I think you posted that on Twitter recently. Yeah, it's, it's a fairly common pattern. It's, I'm not going to pretend that I'm a, you know, it's some magical insight. It's it's, it's highly talked about. Um, but if that were to break out, you know, in a symmetrical fashion, you're looking sometime between now and, and the end of August as a, you know, that playing out. Um, so that's something I'm keeping a close eye on. Uh, I still think precious metals are the you know, one of the better places to be right now valuations and most mining companies in the precious metal space are exceptionally low and exceptionally attractive the junior end of the market is you know you, you're finding companies with high quality expiration targets i mean it's, it's risky it's it's speculation um, but these guys are trading for almost cash you know you're almost getting you're moving your cash from the left pocket to the right pocket with the with all the expiration upside that they have so you know valuations are at a a point where i think they're very attractive at this point in time and your third sector was the battery leveraged uh, metals you said nickel's good for speculators you also like copper and you previously the year previous you liked cobalt what's your perspective on the battery leveled base metals now yeah so that's probably the one i got the most right from from our previous conversation i think excluding oil i think i was looking at things the other day nickel has been the best uh, commodity that i keep it keep a close eye on over the past sort of six to eight months um it's come off a little bit recently along with everything else you know the, the trump trade tariffs kind of whacked the whacked the base metal sector kind of a ask sell first ask questions later type of sell-off um but uh yeah i'm i remain bullish i think if you keep an eye on things like the uh the LME stockpiles and nickel, you can see that's continuing to draw down, which is a good sign. Uh, I, th- I, I think nickel has to go well north of $20,000 a tonne before it'll plateau out for a while. Um, I think it's about 13 and a half now or something like that. Um, copper has took a big whack with the Chinese, you know, the trade tariff sort of drama there. I think copper is actually getting down to the point now where it's very attractive again. Um, so I'm very interested in the copper sector. I, th- I think the copper space in general is kind of, you know, gold, gold gold's harder to analyse because the, the supply and demand fundamentals are very different. It's, it's more demand-driven when everyone's fearful and, 
you know, demand goes through the roof, but the supply side kind of is more or less irrelevant on an investable time scale. Whereas copper, you know, you can do your homework, you can look at the supply demand fundamentals. Mm-hmm. Unless you think the world's going to absolutely implode and, you know, we're not going to be building anything for 20 years in the developed world isn't going to continue to develop. Um, the outlook five years down the road, you know, for the five to 10 year outlook for copper looks, it looks pretty dire from a, from a producer standpoint. I mean, it, to that point where they just don't have, there is no, or very few major new developments projects coming online the, you know the supply demand fundamentals from an investor standpoint look look very attractive six months ago you shared that you were focusing on the highest quality single asset development companies and that you also like lean mid-cap producers with growth potential uh, with highlights on uh, gold and copper in particular uh, are you still looking there or where are you finding the best opportunities yeah i'm still looking i uh, still, still got a lot of uh, the single asset development plays um that i that i like um I I think I mentioned I really like the Aussie space as well, um, and I perhaps I can get your chart so you can put it along with this. But if you can compare the performance of the Australian All Ordinaries Gold Index, which is loosely a you know it's an index that tracks the sort of Aussie Gold's mid cap space, and you compare it to the GDX, you compare it to probably the most similar is the TSX Global Gold Index. Um, they're both run by S and P Global, similar criteria. I mean they just it's like them. It's like there's a completely different commodity they're mining or something, because um, the ASX has just completely outperformed just about everyone else. So that I'm, I remain particularly focused in Australia, but there are a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff in Canada that you know on the on the TSX and the New York Stock Exchange that I that I am liking. Um, but yeah, that 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 is the realm where the, the takeover candidates exist. So. That's where I'm hunting at the moment and spending a lot of time looking, looking at those, those takeover targets. You're working on a specific project that's uh, related to the Australian market. It's a market-focused managed uh, platform. Could you share more about that? Yeah, so I've, I've noticed with uh, a lot of my clients that uh, rather than the brokerage, which is traditionally um, you know, what we've done um, with the private placements and the, and the you know, private placement-centered junior portfolio, um, I was getting a lot more into the slightly bigger end of town um, with my clients, like I said, the single asset development stage plays and and the lean mean producers, um, and a lot of clients just wanted to hand me money to manage myself um, to take take the hassle out of things for them. So I'm just in the process. It's not quite live yet, but it should be should be really soon. Um, starting my own uh, managed platform where I will have an Aussie focus. So it's probably going to be give or take around 50, 60 percent of the portfolio will be Australian names. Um, so, yeah, that's going to hopefully launch in the next month or two, and uh, I'm really excited about it and looking forward to, you know, putting my, putting my research in, into, into something that I'm really, really passionate about. And uh, looking forward to the second half of 2018, what are your final thoughts for the resource investors listening to us? Yeah, I think, I think now is a really good time to have your eyes open and, you know, be prepared to, you know, you do have to take some risk when things are trending down, um, but I think, you know, to use a Rick Rulism, you have to be a contrarian in the sector or you're going to be a victim. Now is the time where, you know, for personally from, from my, you know, working at, at Sprott, I'm noticing probably the worst. I mean, I've been here two and a half years, so, you know, I just clipped the very end of the 2015, you know, bottoms of the bear market. It's getting to me to feel like that level of despondency right now, which has me personally excited because that's that's – that's how it typically feels when when you you're close to a turning point um, obviously i don't have a crystal ball but um i think now is a really 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 good time uh to be looking at what's high quality and what's what's sold off and, and is, is now very cheap um, and because that's what we're seeing that's when the, the the savvy acquirers get busy and that's why i think m a is really going to increase in the next 12 months so Owning those takeover plays in your portfolio, I think, is really going to pay off over the next 12 to 18 months. For listeners that want to learn more about Sam, you can just go on Twitter. Again, Sam's handle is the nude investor. Dot, the nude investor, and you have a blog at the nude investor. Dot com, but I don't believe that's as active right yeah, now. Yeah, that, that's people always ask me about the weird Twitter handle. That was my blog before I joined Sprott. Compliance reasons mean I, I can't really post anymore, so it's kind of a little dated now. But there is some interesting stuff there. If you go and have a look, you can you can see. You know, I got a little bit lucky and almost picked the bottom of the gold 
the, you know, the gold uh, trend back in 2015. Um, but yeah, so follow me on Twitter is probably, probably the best thing. Um, otherwise, you know, if you want to get in touch with me, I'm always happy to have a chat. Um, you can either give me a call at one eight hundred four seven 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 eight five three. 477 or you probably, the, what's even better is email. Uh, my email is sbroom, so S-B-R-O-O-M at sprockglobal.com. Uh, and yeah, you'll be able to get in touch with me and I'll always respond. Again, this is Bill Powers with MiningStockEducation.com reporting from the Sp- Sprott Conference in Vancouver. Sam, thanks for sitting down. Bill, it's been a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you for listening to this Mining Stock Education podcast. Please subscribe and share with like-minded investors. Visit us on the web at MiningStockEducation.com for more resources on precious metals and natural resource investing. At our website, you can also sign up for our free newsletter for interview transcripts, stock picks, and more. 